Hey guys, it is January, so that means we have February, March, April and May. Four months until your exams start. So I know some of you might have done the maths and worked out how many days it is, but well, it's not that many. I'm really, really sorry to break this to you, but we do need to start doing some revision now. So in this video and in all the videos from now on, um, I'm going to break down some simple, easy things that you can do that are going to have a really, really, really big impact on your work. So I'm going to talk to you about kind of like a fancy thing which teachers like to give names to things so we can talk about retrieval practice. Um, I'm going to talk to you about what sort of things you can be doing like really really cheaply really really easily to help yourself i'm going to show you the new books that i've got out which are amazing and i'm going to talk to you about my website but first let's talk about that thing retrieval practice now teachers like to give things names it makes things easier when we talk about them on twitter um it doesn't really mean much to you guys because teachers probably don't talk to you about retrieval practice but what it basically means is doing lots and lots of short fast questions so not sitting there and doing exam paper after exam paper after exam paper but kind of like where are protons where are neutrons what's the mass of this what's the charge of this what's the unit for this can you quickly sort lots and lots of things out and well it doesn't matter if you can't do it straight away because we've still got February, March, April and May until your exams to get that sorted so if you can't remember what ohms are for or if you can't remember what the unit for power is it's okay we've still got time to get that sorted and retrieval practice or just doing lots and lots of little questions is a really really great way to do this now i've done a few things that will help you i'm sure your teachers done a few things that will help you i'm sure there are lots and lots of things well there are lots and lots of things that you can do to help yourself so over on my website i have written you thousands of multiple choice questions and the idea with these is uh, like now in January you sit there and you do the questions you can do them on your phone and you'll get 50% right that like you'll do a quiz on atomic structure and you'll get 50% of the questions right and well that's okay because there's nobody to check that you got them right um I mean obviously it tells you that the answers tells you which ones you got right or got wrong but it doesn't go back to your teachers it doesn't go back to your parents there's no stress or pressure or judgment in getting a few wrong because nobody else is going to know but say you did the same quiz again in February and this time you got 75% right well that's a massive improvement and then say you did the same quiz again in March or in April or May just before your exams and you're getting all the questions right you've made massive massive progress there just by sitting on your phone or at your computer just clicking the questions that I've written for you this is such a brilliant brilliant way for you to revision it's just why I've put so much effort into writing so many questions for you there are lots of other ways you can do short, sharp questions as well. I'm sure your teachers give you loads and loads of questions. And well, even if you've done them all already, cover up the answers and have another go at them. In the new books that I've written, there are pages of retrieval questions where we can just sit there and like cover up the answers and write down. For retrieval questions, quick quizzing isn't meant to be a test. It's not meant to be hard work. It's supposed to be... If I learn these five short facts now, maybe I'll remember all of them, maybe I'll remember three of them, but when I come back and do it again in a month's time, maybe I'll remember four of them, maybe I'll remember five of them. But the idea is if you keep doing them over and over and over again, and I'm not asking you to spend loads and loads of time in this, I'm asking you to spend five minutes on a topic, ten minutes on a topic, do one quiz, do two quizzes, while you're waiting for the bus, just sit there on your phone and do some flashcards and some quizzes on my website or on Quizlet or on on however you want to do it but little and often now is the perfect time to start doing that because you have the time you can go over things and check things and we can sort out where those gaps are so that is a really really key thing for you to start now and it's not sitting down for hours and hours and hours doing loads and loads of writing it's quick quizzing can you kind of like retrieve the facts really really quickly and the key thing that you need to do is take those facts and 
make sure that make them easy for you so you kind of like if somebody asks you what house number you live at hopefully you should be able to go i live at this number because you know it it's stored properly in your brain where if somebody asked you what 422 times 2 million and 47 was, you'd have to sit there and work it out. It takes a little bit more effort. Whereas if we take the stuff that you're learning, like um, what are the units of energy, and change it from something you have to think about, something you know just like that, in the exam, things are going to be much, much easier for you. A great example of this is square numbers. If I ask you to work out 196 divided by 14, some of you will know what the answer is just like that because you've learnt it. And some of you will sit there and you will do long division and find out that 196 divided by 14 is 14. I'm like 99% sure that's correct, so I will go and check afterwards. Because 14 squared is 196. Now if you saw that in the exam, you would either know what the answer is because you've learned your square numbers little and often, little and often over time, or you'd have to sit there and spend maybe only a minute, maybe two minutes doing the long division. But you can see how even spending that minute working it out is harder work than just knowing it, and it takes up more time than just knowing it. So the more stuff we can spend, or the more time we can spend getting stuff from the I can work it out to the I just know it section of your brain, then well, the exams are going to be a lot easier. And now is the time to start doing that. You don't have to spend a lot of money to do this. You can give your friend a topic and you can take a topic and you can write 10 short questions with the answers and your friend can write 10 short questions with the answers and then you can swap them. So you've done revision by writing the questions and then you're going to answer your friend's questions so you're doing twice as much revision having only put one bit of effort in. So working with friends, working in a group is a really, really great way to reduce the amount of effort you have to put into revision, but still get a lot out of it. If you are doing AQA GCSE Science, I'm only going to very, very briefly do this because I know a lot of you will, won't be. I want to introduce you to my two new books. Look at these. Well, there are actually five new books. There are three for um, one each for separate sciences. And then... Look at the size of this! This is for combined science and it's absolutely massive. These are brilliant. I know I'm 100% biased because I put a lot, a lot of effort into these, but there is so much content in here that is completely different to anything else that's out on the market. Um, it's really, really good. A-level students, I am currently very, very busy working on the next set for you, but Go and have a look at these. Um, you can get them from Amazon, or if you go and nag your head of a department, your head of a department can get them on for 40% off for you, which makes this massive book, I think it takes it down to £9, which isn't very much. Now, if you haven't got one already, a really, really important thing for you to do is to sort out a timetable. Now, I know this is not going to sound like fun, and this isn't going to sound great for... Well, it's not going to be something that you want to spend time doing, but it is really, really important. There are three things you need to make sure that you do when you're making a timetable. You need to make sure every single topic is covered. Now, I am awful for this. When I am trying to study something, I open the book at page one and I start at the beginning. So I know the beginning bit really, really well, and then the end bit, I'm kind of like, ooh, but biology paper one is just as important as physics paper two. And I can tell you that people work a lot harder for biology paper one than they do for physics paper two, but they are just as important. So, when you're making your timetable, you've got to make sure that you plan in all of the revision for the exams that are at the end, as well as the exams right at the beginning, because it's all well and good saying, oh, well, I'll revise for that exam. You know, I'll revise for the exams at the end of June, once I've done the exams at the end of May, but when you get back from those exams in May, you're gonna be tired you're going to need a break. So I don't want you to be doing loads and loads of work at the end of May for the exams in June. If we take the work for the exams in June and do it now, 
or at least when you're making your timetable make sure you schedule all of that in things will be a lot lot easier for you you need to make sure that you've covered each topic more than once you do not just learn something and then it's in your brain tying your shoes you had to do several times before you knew it you didn't just watch it once and then know it you have to do these things over and over again so cover each topic more than once and then the third and most important thing that you need to do on this timetable is give yourself time off i cannot stress how important it is that you prioritize giving yourself a break which is why if we start revision now may june will be a lot easier for you because if you have a day where you have four hours of written exams you don't necessarily want to come home in the evening and start revising for the exam the next day you want to come home in the evening and put on a nice comfy sweatsuit and um not not do very much basically um that, that's what i want for you in may that you know you come back from the exams and you know maybe you watch a video or maybe you look at some flashcards or do some quizzes on my website but you are not doing hardcore revision after spending all day in exams so if we get our timetable sorted hopefully we can get that in progress the things that you need to be thinking about and prioritizing are removing stresses from your life removing drama from your life so i'm going to say this i keep saying this and i know most of you aren't actually going to pay any attention but leave your phone downstairs overnight during the summer when your exams are over you can spend all night on instagram and not get any sleep that is absolutely fine i'm not going to argue with you about that but for the next few months just leave your phone downstairs because if a drama happens at like 11 o'clock at night you're going to want to pick up your phone you're going to see that hear that little beep see that little light go off and you're going to want to check it and then you are losing out in sleep and you're stressing over whatever drama has happened just leave your phone downstairs the drama will still be there in the morning but you'll have had a good night's sleep and you'll be better able to deal with it and go to bed early don't stay up all night revising because it's really 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 not good for you when we get a bit closer to the exams i'll spend more time going into depth over this but um at the moment just try and leave your phone downstairs for me just maybe not on a friday or a saturday night but on a sunday night before you start just try and leave your phone downstairs and if the world doesn't end maybe try it for like two nights in a row or something um and then the last thing uh is for a level students i promise I promise you guys, um, A level biology, A level chemistry, A level maths, I am furiously, furiously, furiously working away on content for you, um, which is why it's really, really hard for me to actually get any videos at the moment because I'm busy writing so much. But I promise you that is where my focus is lying at, at the moment and there will be books and there will be videos and there's a whole new website coming for you and it should be ready soon except every time i go to launch the website something else breaks um yeah anyway guys four months to the exams i've got lots and lots coming i'm going to hear with you every single step of the way i promise ouch this is why in some videos i have unexplained scratches